Welcome to Chomix. Sonic the Hedgehog has an identity crisis. Or at least that's what the general consensus is. Ever since Sonic Generations canonically separated Sonic's character into two, one representing the classic 2D-styled games and the other representing the newer 3D-styled games, it's created a more succinct tear in the community, grouping fans into categories depending on which style of games they like. To be fair, this divide has always been present and has resulted in a legion of heated debates online. But ever since Sonic Generations made the distinction a part of the actual canonical lore, this divide has only gotten worse. Like it or not, Sonic has two separate identities. It's been over 10 years since Sonic Generations, and even to this day we still see Sonic being marketed with both classic and modern iterations with no signs of stopping soon. And it isn't just from a marketing standpoint, but from a story standpoint as well. Sometimes we get both classic and modern Sonic in the same game. And uh, the implications this has actually brings up a whole bunch of questions. From what I can tell, the majority of people, including myself, aren't the biggest fans of this decision. But obviously there has to be a reason that Sega keeps making a distinction between the two. So why does Sega insist on having two Sonics? What are the benefits of keeping them separate? And after all this time, is it even possible to make it work? All this and more will be discussed on today's episode, so let's dive in. This video is brought to you by today's sponsor, Ren. Just like Sonic, I think protecting the environment is extremely important. Believe it or not, the idea of people like Dr. Eggman wreaking complete havoc on the environment isn't as unrealistic as you'd think. And needless to say, this is pretty scary. But like it or not, everyone's lifestyle emits CO2 in one way or another. Even the tiniest of things contributes to CO2 emissions. Stuff like driving, obviously, but even simple things like living in your home or even just eating food. So to combat this, REN allows users to collectively take action against climate crises in a simple yet effective way. Using REN's website, you can calculate your own carbon footprint and then offset it in a multitude of ways. Like getting helpful tips on reducing your own carbon footprint in your day-to-day -day life, or like funding various activities like carbon reduction, tree planting, or rainforest protection projects. And when you contribute to these types of projects, you'll get monthly updates with photos on the progress so you can see exactly how your money is being spent to help save the environment. For example, there's the California Biochar Project, which aims to prevent wildfires in California by removing dead and flammable trees and then turning them into biochar, which can be used to improve things like soil quality for agriculture. Use the link in my description to join Ren on their mission to take action against the climate crisis. The first 100 people to sign up will get 10 extra trees planted in their name. Start offsetting your carbon footprint today on Ren. Huge thank you to Ren for sponsoring this video, and with all that being said, let's continue with today's topic. To me, I've always just thought of Sonic as Sonic. All those other iterations of him were just simply changes in art style, right? Well, that was how the character was treated back in the day. Sonic's updated look from the adventure games and on was completely unmentioned in the story, almost like it had always been that way. At least in the video games, there isn't a lore-related reason for his updated look. And this is pretty standard practice. Certain properties, especially ones that have been running for quite some time, like in Sonic's case over 30 years, tend to get small changes or even complete updates to their art styles over time. For example, look at the Pokemon anime. The main character, Ash Ketchum, looks completely different in this newer season compared to season 1. This newer version of Ash is a lot less angular, his hair's a bit lighter, and his eyes are brown. But it's not like he's a different character or anything, right? I mean, that'd be super weird. Ooh, right. So yeah, Sonic decided to actually take this route as we all know. Sonic Generations was the game that made the decision to split Sonic up into two separate characters, Classic Sonic and Modern Sonic. And at the time, it was a fun little novelty within that game, being an anniversary title celebrating the series' long and rich history. But then, they kept drilling in this canonical distinction between characters in things after Sonic Generations. Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces, which take place back to back and have lore directly connected to each other, continued to separate these two iterations of Sonic. I remember first watching the trailer for Sonic Forces, and the moment they introduced Classic Sonic's return, I audibly asked, why? For Sonic Generations, the anniversary title, I get it. 
Don't get me wrong, it would end up completely distorting the Sonic timeline and convoluting a ton of lore, but whatever. It was one game, and it didn't really take itself too seriously when it came to the story. But Sonic Forces was all about taking itself seriously. Despite this though, in my opinion, Classic Sonic's inclusion was never justified within the story. Why did Sonic Team put him in this game? Why do they insist on Sonic being two separate characters? What exactly does this accomplish? Well, let's maybe try looking at it from Sega's perspective. As we all know, Sonic Generations was a huge success, being both well-received critically and commercially. Many fans considered it a grand comeback, taking everything people loved about Sonic Unleashed and Colors while cutting most of the fat. On top of that, it was just a huge nostalgic love letter to a series that so many people grew up playing. Sonic Generations is one of my own personal favorite Sonic games, it's just that good. Come on, how can blasting through City Escape in full HD and getting chased by the gigantic gun truck not put a smile on your face? So with this success, Sega knew that they had caught lightning in a bottle. Something about this game really resonated with fans. Screw the fact that the game itself is fun as hell, the one thing that Sega took away from the success of Sonic Generations was... Hey, nostalgia is pretty cool. Nostalgia is a very powerful thing. And honestly, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I don't really think there's anything wrong with tapping into nostalgia. For many, it was a way to see the Sonic that they fell in love with. The Sonic that they hadn't seen in years. If we take a step back, it actually becomes quite obvious how much Sonic has strayed away from his origins after all this time. And I'm not even saying that's a bad thing. But if you look at what Sonic was at the beginning, and then take a jump to, I don't know, the adventure era, these almost feel like two separate things. Personally, I'm a fan of both, but not everyone is that way. Having a separate Sonic representing the older style of games was a way to bring back longtime fans who had maybe since fallen off of the series. And keeping the current Sonic representing the newer style of games was a way to avoid alienating current fans. Some preferred the look and feel of the classic games and others preferred the story and gameplay of the modern games. Sega realized that they could continue to use classic Sonic in conjunction with modern Sonic as a way to please both types of fans. Giving Sonic a sort of dual citizenship in 2D and 3D. That way, no matter which type of fan you are, you're guaranteed to get something, at least eventually. So despite what many people might tell you, there are benefits to having Sonic's identity split up like this. But is this decision to separate Sonic without consequence? Well, I definitely think there are some negative aspects to it. Besides all the infighting, but let's be real, that was gonna happen anyways, the most obvious negatives are the plethora of inconsistencies it brings to the lore. Earlier on, I mentioned how Sonic's redesign from Adventure and On was simply an art style change. But both Classic Sonic and Modern Sonic existing at the same time right next to each other actually implies the opposite. It implies something does in fact happen to Sonic that makes him look the way he does now. Okay, well that's easy to explain, right? Classic Sonic is simply a younger Sonic. They mention countless times in Sonic Generation's story how he's from the past. Problem solved, right? Well, not exactly. You see, Sonic's age is really weird. According to Sonic Jam, Classic Sonic is 16 years old. But according to Sonic Channel, Modern Sonic is actually 15 years old. The one that's supposed to be older is actually younger? What the fuck? So either Sonic has Benjamin Button disease where he ages backwards, or they really didn't think this part of the lore through. I'm gonna guess the latter. Also, Sonic has a literal birthday within the events of Sonic Generations, but somehow he's still 15 after all this time. The character ages in Sonic games make no sense. And don't even get me started on how mentioning most of these characters' ages in the first place is kind of dumb. Because naturally, with long-running franchises like this, it becomes pretty ridiculous how the characters all somehow stay the same age, despite even having birthday parties within their own story for the main character. Maybe another time. Okay, okay, the age thing is inconsistent, but I'm sure it all chalks down to being retconned at some point. That's fine. It happens. So I guess we can assume that Classic Sonic is a younger version of Sonic, since that's what they specifically tell us in Sonic Generations. But there's still one big problem. This plot point is literally contradicted in Sonic Forces. Here it's explained that Classic Sonic is from an alternate dimension. Alternate timelines and alternate dimensions are actually two different things, and no, I will not be explaining the difference here in this video. For the sake of all of our sanity, just take my word for it. I guess that can explain the age inconsistency, but that doesn't change the fact that two Sonics existing side by side doesn't have a straightforward answer after all this time. So which is it? Alternate timeline or alternate dimension? 
the world may never know. So is it even possible for two Sonics to work simultaneously? Well, as cheesy as it sounds, I don't think there's necessarily a clear answer here. As I've explained, there's definitely positive aspects to it. When it comes to marketing and pleasing hardcore fans, the use of classic Sonic can be a great option. But when it comes to the lore, it... Uh, I think as long as Sega keeps classic and modern Sonic in their own lanes, it has the potential to work out. In the words of punk rock band The Offspring, you gotta keep them separated. Hey everyone, thank you so much for making it to the end of this video. If you like what you saw, leave a fat like and subscribe for more content similar to this. In the comments below, let me know what you think of classic and modern Sonic. Should they continue to be separate characters or should they just be one? And to take that discussion even further beyond, make sure to join our community discord, I'll leave the link to that in the description. And finally, you know I gotta thank my amazing channel members. You all absolutely rock and make content like this possible in the first place. If you would also like to become a channel member for only $2 along with getting some pretty awesome perks, press the join button beneath this video or the channel membership link in the description for more details. And with all that being said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day. Peace.